because at the end of the day, when you look at the single parent rate in the inner cities, you know, it's like what, 70, 80% in some places, mm. no fathers in the home. Yep. And in those same places with no fathers are in the home, 70, 80%, what's the crime rate? High. What's the, what's the teenage pregnancy rate? High. What's the high school dropout rate? High. There you go. Yeah. Absence of a father. And so that's why I did the things that I did. Yeah, my mom loved me, but I wanted something that I couldn't get from a father. Yeah. And so, yeah, man, that progressed to selling drugs. And How young did you sell drugs? I started selling drugs when I was like maybe 14, 15. Mm. 16 and then that progressed to running high level scams man where i was out there just hustling cell phones you know cell phones became the a very became nobody really used phones cell phones back in the day. only like the rich you know wall street brokers had the big brick phones but then the nokia phone came out and then you started getting motorola star tech phones started coming out and so i was able to get a gig at a, a cell phone company i won't mention the company's name <laughs> and uh, uh and i got a job there because a guy put me on that uh, as to how to hustle phones essentially you know activate you get activate three lines of credit, three cell phone lines on one person's uh, credit. Uh, get the Wait, data. Activate three on one. Yeah. So back in the day, when cell phones started popping up, I don't know if you remember, they had the twenty nine ninety nine plans. Twenty nine ninety nine. Oh yeah, you, I keep forgetting you thirty. Yeah, I'm, I'm thinking I'm for young. All right. So back. So back around two thousand, two thousand one, cell phones started to become a thing, and uh, and and the plan started out twenty nine ninety nine a month for thirty dollars. Okay, uh, if you go, if you uh, sorry, twenty, and you would get sorry twenty nine for thirty minutes. Excuse me, I said thirty dollars. Twenty nine ninety nine a month for thirty minutes, where the cell phone companies would make their money was on the overage charges, because who's going, who's going, who's going to just, just talk for thirty minutes on a cell phone right. when cell phone is becoming like the primary means of communication, right? And so. These companies weren't selling the phones per se; they were selling the plans, mm. right? And so, all pretty much all cell phone companies at the time, and uh, and so the way we we would get people get clients is we we pitch them a phone, and say, all right, if you buy this phone, got to run your credit. You got good credit, you can get this phone. If you got even better credit, then you get get three phones. All you gotta do is pay thirty dollars a month. Now, with some phones, like with the more high end phones, like when you start getting to the start, start the uh, Motorola Tic Tac phone that looked like a little Tic Tac. Oh yeah, yeah. I yeah. keep forgetting you. No idea. <laughs> but, <laughs> but you get the, t the Motorola two way time pages. Remember the time port, silver and gray. Nope. Sorry, silver and black. Okay, yeah, that was sorry. All right. Anyway, uh, uh, so long story short, I would get people's date of birth, social name, and then I would activate a phone. Three, more, more cases, three phones on that one person's line of credit. I would then go mm. sell that phone, those three phones to drug dealers for for three to five hundred, sometimes eight hundred dollars, depending on the style of the phone. The drug dealers like the phones because they would stay on for ninety days. First thirty days, you wouldn't get a bill. At the thirty day mark, after you pass the thirty day mark, then a bill would come in. Oh, had had. Uh, Sorry, at the 30-day mark, the bill will come in. You had until the 60-day mark to pay the bill. If it wasn't paid by the 90-day mark, the phone would cut off. And so drug dealers like the phones because... They're burner phones. They're burner phones. They yeah. stay on for 90 days, cut off, come back to me, get a new phone, and guess what? It's unlimited plan. I was doing unlimited cell phone <laughs> minutes before it wasn't even unlimited <laughs> plans, right? Yeah. And so I was making a lot of money doing that. That was my cell phone hustle. And... Uh, that's how I get. That's that's when I got into the music business. I was uh, essentially laundering the money through the through through a record company I started called Eighth Wonder Entertainment. How old are you when you started? That? I'm eighteen, nineteen. Tw okay. You know, I yeah, I'm I'm se I'm seventeen, eighteen, nineteen. Were you an aspiring rapper at the time? Or? I, I I wanted to be like P Diddy and Dame Dash. Mm. So um, Brad knows because I got this compilation album on my. I keep the compilation album that we were able to make. Uh, on my office desk as a reminder where I came from. And mm -hmm. it's a picture of me and, and the artist that we had signed to the record company. And so I was I was just trying to be P. Diddy. I, I wanted to, I, I wasn't the rapper. I wanted to be the guy that, you know, the, behind the business side of things. I, and so I wanted to do what Dame Dash and Jay-Z did where they, they used a drug game to help get them set up in the music game. And then they, 
It did work out game, And it worked out for them. So say. that was my exit plan. And yeah. so, you know, that's where I was spending the money. I was spending the money recording at, stu- at studios and... Were you going yeah. to school during all this? Yeah, or were you, yeah, I was still in school. Were you cutting school? No, all I was the time? going to school because that was my way to keep my mom off my back. Uh, I was, that's, so that's she how thought I, everything was chameleon. All good. That's how I was becoming chameleon because you know if I'm I'm in school and my mom's not getting truancy letters and I'm doing fairly good and I'm grad graduate gotcha. to the next grade, then she's off my back. You know, she thinks I got a job at a sneaker store wherever. I had a whole sneaker hustle as well. That was another thing. I was, <laughs> a, I was working at a sneaker store called Athlete's Foot, and you know, um, I, long story I remember short, Athlete's Foot. Yeah, man. Long Long story short, um, one day a guy came in and he was in a rush and and he said, hey, I need a pair of sneakers right now. I got to get to a meeting. And I ran and he looked at the wall, picked out sneakers. I ran and got them and he just threw me cash and said, don't worry about it. Just just charge me, you know, tr- you know, overcharge me, whatever the case may be. I don't need to change. And he runs out and that's when I got the idea. Oh, I could do this. And I took his sneakers and I put them in the... Um, uh, the box and i put that box in the defect section because we had and, and, and they were, in our warehouse we had a oh. defect session and like every like four or six months like somebody would come from the main warehouse and come just they wouldn't even look in the boxes they would just come grab the boxes of defective shoes and take them and so i was i was selling i wouldn't do i wasn't doing that for every person i was smart about it but Kids in my high school be like, yo, I want the new Jordans. I want the new pennies. I want the new whatever. I'd be like, I got you. Give me, you know, give me, if the sneaker costs $120, I'd be like, give me 100, 100 racks. Or give me give me $90. They give me the cash. Come back next day. Boom, here's your sneakers. Oh, my God. So I so I, I, I was doing the drug. I was doing the sneakers. Then I was doing the cell phones. True businessman. True businessman. All the you way around. I mean? Was your mom and, talking about college during this whole time, though? Because you're doing pretty well in school. Like, what was... I, was, I wasn't doing well. I was doing good enough to graduate to the next grade. Got it. I wasn't doing, like, my brother. So my brother was different. My brother graduated high school in three years. Um, he got his master. He got he graduated college in three. He got a full ride academic scholarship to Syracuse yeah. University. He studied wow. engineering there, and then he he got his master's in uh, computer science engineering in one year. Wow. So he was the he was the brains. You know what I mean? I was the one that wanted to be in the streets, and so um um yes, I I did good enough to get to the next grade. And that was enough to kind of keep my mom off my back. And then I graduated high school. And once I graduated high school, I didn't want to go to college. Mm. I did not want to go to college. I wanted to be a music mogul. That's what I wanted. <laughs> Seriously, that's yeah. what I wanted. Like, like to me, going to college was like beneath me. That was like below me. That's like, again, I'm, I'm a kid. I'm a street You're kid. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah but not just an entrepreneur. You. I'm a street kid. I want the I want the bands. I want the jewelry. Yes. I want, you don't get that going to college. You get that being in the streets. You get the girls by hustling and doing music. That's what I wanted because I was trying to get that affirmation I didn't get from my father. Thank you for watching the video, guys. Please hit that subscribe button and check out this clip's full podcast episode by clicking here or in the description below.